There isn't a single YouTuber out there who has spoke about this monk mode protocol. This is the most extreme protocol that I found three years ago on this, this underground group, that's what we'll call them, that no longer really exist. This is the hardest monk mode protocol out there. And it's not one of those average ones where you're supposed to meditate t for 10 minutes a day and, and not, not drink coffee or something. This is specifically for the men who genuinely need to fix their lives. If you look around right now and your room is filthy and your mind is filthy and your body is flabby and you need something extreme to change your life, then this is probably going to be the monk mode protocol for you. I was in this position about three years ago, exactly three years ago today, exactly three years ago, March, 2020. That was the month, the months where I used to stay up late till two, three, four AM. And I used to go on the website 4chan. I used to be like, you don't understand this, bro. I used to be a 4chaner. If you don't know what 4chan is, it's like one of the most like fucking disgusting, dirty websites out there. It's like, it's where the full on degenerates go. And I used to be the guy who would go on there till 4am watching like disgusting porn, just wasting time. I'd be high as fuck whilst doing it. I used to literally fap at least five times a day. I'd literally, bro I would wake up, right? I'd wake up, I'd go to the toilet. I always needed like, I, I've always needed a shit in the morning. It's just something... I don't know. So I, I wake up, have a shit first thing, right? And these were the months where I used to have a shit and whilst I was having a shit, I would fap every morning. And I actually wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be like successful at this time. So straight afterwards, you know, the idea would be, okay, come on, let's get on my laptop. Let's learn like these online money-making methods, like drop shipping and writing eBooks and like coding was becoming really popular at the start of, of COVID. So I'm trying to learn how to like make a website or some shit. You know, I'm just trying loads of different things and my habits are so terrible. I needed like a complete, complete extreme makeover. And I found this idea and it genuinely I knew what I was about to teach you in, in this video was gonna work for me. I went from being a full on degenerate who was broke it's a long story, but I literally had less money than a homeless man that I was like, that I was helping. There was a homeless guy I was helping. He literally had more money than I did. Bro, <laughs> imagine being broker than a homeless guy that you're helping. <laughs> There's some dark days. What I'm telling you right now doesn't really justify uh, that period of my life. I am... Um, I will have a book published about my life later on this year. It'll be like my first like book. And it'll, I think it'll be quite inspiring to read like the details of my life that I haven't dove that deeply into on YouTube. And you'll read about this period of my life with the, the details. Me helping this homeless guy whilst I was broke. And I used, to, I used to get night sweats. I couldn't sleep at night for months. So much sh shit I was going through around this time. And I got myself out. I made a huge change to my life. I got onto this monk mode protocol that we're gonna like fully, I'm gonna give you this full guide to. Literally all you just have to do is just not be a Jeffrey. Stop scrolling down to the comments for extra dopamine. Stop looking at the suggested video, stop checking your phone. And for the first time in a little while, just hold direct eye contact with me right now and throughout this video. This video is fairly long, so 100%, if you need to split it up and watch a little bit tomorrow, that's absolutely fine. But for what any minute, any second that you're gonna spend on this video, give it like full attention, no scrolling down, make it full screen and just fucking stare at me. Practice like some presence, like, you know, really, really 
invest into this mentally and think, okay, you know, he, he's describing things that are quite similar to my life. So maybe, you know, he got himself out and like, oh shit, he's got 2 million subscribers or 1.9 million subscribers. So, you know, he's, he's probably kind of successful now. So it's kind of insane that in only three years, he's been able to transform his life. Because if you can relate to the kind of life that I had just three years ago, and you maybe want to get to the point where I am now, with quite a successful business and... I don't know, man. It's it's always looked down upon to talk about your successes online. Like if I, t if I was about to list some, some accomplishments to you, but then people often just kind of think you're a bad person if you talk about your success online. I think that comes from, you know, people's own um, low self-esteem or something. But maybe you can just speculate what kind of life that I have and how much money that I make with a channel this big. Bearing in mind that being a YouTuber was genuinely my childhood or my teenage dream. So what I did, I got onto this monk mode protocol that we can describe as military discipline. I copied what the military use to, tr not to train, but to destroy their new recruits. I copied what the military do to destroy their newest recruits. And I did that myself without being in the military. You know how like the guys who want to join the army, you, you go through like, you know, some assessment periods, whatever health checks. But then if you do get accepted and enlisted and then you go and you go to the, the boot camp, the basic training for like eight weeks. And it's just a grueling period of, of okay, 5 a.m. wake up, 5.30 bed and uniform inspection, 6 a.m. drill, 7 a.m. workout, 9 a.m. eat, 9.30 this, like, you know, regimented, like an extreme version of the timetable that we had in school where every part of your day was planned out beforehand and you had to be there. This extreme discipline that you would trim your hair off for, that that not only trains the, the young men who are the recruits, but it destroys them. It pushes them past the point that they thought they could ever get to and then pushes them past that point. It destroys them and rebuilds them. I realized that this is actually what I needed. And on a little bit of a sidetrack, I did actually enlist into the Royal Air Force because I wanted this experience. I decided to be a YouTuber instead. So it kind of worked out for me, but still. <laughs> the idea behind all this was just copying this military discipline and, and to be productive all day. You see, at the time I was looking at some self-improvement videos like you might do. And I was honestly, I was only seeing soft motherfuckers. I was only seeing soft guys recommend to you like cute little phrases, like don't push yourself too hard. And it's about the journey, not the destination. And, and you know, it's okay. Like, you know, life's about balance and it's okay to play one hour of video games. It's okay to, you know, just eat a little bit of junk food. It's okay to smoke a little bit of weed. Maybe for healthy people, maybe for normal people, that's fine. But I've known I'm not a, like a normal average person. I'm not a mediocre person. So that hasn't been fine for me because I am a shell of the man that I'm supposed to be if I don't live to my potential. And I think you should say that. I think you should like whisper those words outside of your mouth right now. And if you've got more confidence, say it loudly. I am a shell of the man that I am supposed to be if I do not live to my potential. And one hour of video games a day and a little bit of weed put into a fucking crack pipe. Like that's how I used to smoke weed is not like rolled up into a smoking joint, but I would put it in a pipe and like all that, or like in a fucking plastic bong that crackheads use. A little bit of that. Like would, would any of us say like, oh guys, come on. Like just, just a little bit of porn is okay. No, I couldn't live like that. I'm a very extreme guy. And, and when you are like me, your life is going to be one of the two extremes. Either you're going to be extremely fucked up and you need to fix your life, or you're going to be extremely successful. And I think the beautiful thing about the internet, about what you're literally watching right now, not to sound like egotistical or something, but you're genuinely watching, like you're listening to someone who's giving you advice who has crossed this 
I have bridged this gap from extremely stupid, extremely lazy, extremely weak, extremely drug addicted, extremely sex addicted to what a lot of people would call extremely successful. I'm certainly not all the way there. I've got so much more to learn and to, to, you know, to keep building. But this is the beauty. This is the beauty. You're learning today from someone who's actually done this journey. Because at the time when I was looking at like self-improvement advice and you know how to like stop playing video games and everything and everyone's telling me like, oh, you know, but you know, like just if you want to play one hour a day that, you know, you go ahead, and you know, like this. And I was just thinking like, I can't relate to any of these motherfuckers giving advice online. I needed someone who was quite extreme who was going to tell me like, you're better than playing even one second of video games. And so I became that person for myself. And so I'm going to walk you through the exact process that I did. And I think this will change your life as much as it changed mine. At the time of recording this video, we're close to the end of March in 2023. And I'd like you now just to prep ourselves and get ready for the four steps of this protocol. It's just to close your eyes and just to imagine what you want the end of this year to be like what you want December to be like. What do you want to be like? Who do you want to be? What goals do you want to accomplish? And how will it feel when you've accomplished those goals and you walk past the people who doubted you? And also, how will it feel when you're surrounded by the people who always believed in you and they do finally see that you lived up to your potential? The pats on the back the warm welcome, the respect, the improved posture, the way that you carry yourself now, the way that your shirt fits tight on your sleeves because you've been hitting the gym hard and you've been improving your diet. How awesome it feels that when you do finally go out with a bunch of good people, you cover the bill like it's nothing because you are that man now. And you can get to that point faster than you think it can. The protocol that we're about to discuss today has four steps and you must go through each step consecutively, like one, two, three, four, you must do that. There's going to be points in each of these steps that you're not go going to want to do. And there's going to be points in each of these steps that your brain is going to start to convince you and say like, oh, no, 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 you don't need to do that one. Yeah, no, that's a bit extreme. Don't do that. I want to tell you right now, you are where you are because you've listened to your brain. So if you look around right now, and again, there's filth. If you look at your bank balance and, and <laughs> it's filth. If you aren't at a good place in life, if you're at a bad place where you need to watch a video like this, which is about how to fix your life, I'm telling you right now, your brain got you here. For a lot of people out in the world, you can't actually trust your brain. You trusted your brain and it got you to this moment that you need to fix your life. Some of the best advice I ever heard was don't trust your own brain, trust the brain of the person who's achieved what you want to achieve. You trusted your brain and you, it led up to you being in this moment right now when you're probably broken and unha unhappy, unhealthy. So when your, your Jeffrey brain, when your lizard brain does pipe up and it does tell you like, oh no, no, they, 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 you don't need to do, do, do what he's saying right now. Nah, 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 you don't have to do that. Just understand that when you have listened to your brain, it hasn't led you to a good place in life. Let's go over the four pro steps of this protocol. The first step is to set reasonable goals. You see, a lot of people get onto monk mode or onto a period where they want to improve their lives. Like you've probably tried to improve your life before, but here's the issue. When you don't set a clear goal, when you don't have like a piece of paper, like oh, maybe I should just show you, you want to see something. Look, th this is literally my wall. I have pieces of paper over my wall with my goals written on them and my plans. What, what the paper, like I, I know you're probably trying to pause the video thinking, wait, I need to see what it says. It doesn't matter what it says. It's just simply my goals. You don't need to copy exactly what it says. It's just literally, okay, I've got goals. I've got notes and stuff. We're the extreme kind of guy where we need to put our goals in our face. You know, some, some guys can literally just think of a new goal and just go and achieve it. We're the kind of people that we need to like think of a new goal, set it as our phone wallpaper, literally write it on paper and stick it up on our fucking wall, stick it up on our door and everything to kind of remind ourselves like to obsess over it. 
we're just those kinds of people. We need to be quite extreme. We need to set reasonable goals and specifically do set written out goals for this because a lot of guys will try to improve their lives like you may have and within three days, you kind of lose direction, get a bit bored, it's a little bit too hard and then you go back to watching Rick and Morty and playing video games with your Discord friends again. Has that not happened to you before? We can't have that happen again and the reason why this happens, the reason why you make a little bit of progress and then you snap back to where you were is because you didn't set this clear goal to, to actually reach for. You didn't set this goal that you genuinely believed you could achieve. Interestingly, before I have said that we should set massive goals, I think that we should be very ambitious men. But when you're at this point right now, when you need to fix your life, this is so interesting. If you set a big goal right now, it will actually be a bad thing for you. Remember that if we set a big goal right now, really big, audacious, you know, ambitious goals, like, yeah, I want to be really rich in a year or something. It will be a bad thing because you simply don't have the capacity for that. So this is going to somewhat hurt our egos, but also slightly excite us because it's something we haven't tried. We need to set such a reasonable goal that it's almost going to seem like it's below us and we're going to think like, yeah, we're almost going to be smug, like, yeah, I could do that easily. There's a lot of people online right now who say that you shouldn't set goals and that the journey is better than the destination and that systems, you know, James Clear in his book, Atomic, Atomic Habits, says this and a lot of people start parroting it. Oh, systems over goals. You should just, you know, know like what habits and systems to do over goals. It's like all of that is, is brain dead to me because the reason why we set systems, the reason why we develop habits is for the goal. The goal is like the navigation. This is like, like when you get into the, in a car, you know where you're going. That's the whole point. You set the goal. Okay, I want to go to this this shop over there. That's the goal. Then you focus on the road. But once you know that you're going to that goal, a lot of people in these days criticize goal setting and say that it's not needed. And instead, you should just do like systems and you know this wholesome, cute pussy shit. That's not how it works. You need to have the clear goal to begin with, and then you do the pussy like systems and and you know daily habits to get there. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do and I will do it next to you. Grab a piece of paper right now and a pen. You can use a computer or a phone or whatever you want to do, but find somewhere that we can write. And we're going to do this together right now. So if right now your brain's already telling you that, yeah, yeah, just continue watching. I'll do this later. That means you're a pussy. Get ready to write right now. There's no excuses. This is non-negotiable. If, you, if you're not going to follow these steps, then don't watch this video. By now you are literally ready to write. Agreed? You're not just going to say, oh, I'll do this later. Do this with me, right? In this paper, we're going to write five to 10 goals that we want to achieve by the end of this year. So by December, if you're watching this video later on and it's like September, maybe change it to like six months from now. But by the end of this year, through the month of December, we want to achieve these goals. We're going to write five to 10 down. And so, for example, I could say 1000 subs. That could be like my first goal there. 1000 subs. Go on, you do this now, right? Five to 10 goals. So over December, we'll say either by the end of the new year or maybe what I like to do personally is to think about what I will achieve through the month of December. So over December, I will make $500 online. With that, see, $500 online. By the end of the year, I will also bulk up 15 pounds gone. Write your five to 10 goals right now and I'll write mine. Do them right now, keep the video playing because I'm gonna write mine right now. We'll do this together. Go on, what do you wanna? achieve by the end of the year. If you got five to 10, I've got six right now. I've got eight done. We've wrote down what goals we hope to achieve by the end of the year. 
we've got eight. I've told you to write five to 10, right? I want you to look at this list right now and ask yourself, what two goals, let's say two to three, at a max three, one to three, the, the less you choose for this, the better, right? If you can just choose one, that's even better. If you can choose two, that's pretty good. If you can choose three, that's acceptable. But just one, from one to three, what one to three goals here are the most meaningful, most impactful that you would, like that are the priority? Look around for these, like up to three you can choose, but if you choose one, that's way better. If there's only one that you really care about, but if, for example, you can choose up to three. So if looking at this list, pick out the three that you think that will change your life the most that you really want to do, you really want to achieve. And for those three, just circle them. Circle the three goals or up to three goals that are the most important. So mine are the three that I wrote down first. I've got 1000 subs, $500 a month online, bulk up 15 pounds. And then I haven't circled the ones which are kind of less important. And they are go traveling, make a blog, learn to rap, run a marathon, write a book and random other ones, right? You right now should have some goals which are circled and some that aren't. This is very important. The goals that are not circled, cross them out. Aggressively co cross them out. Because it is these goals, it is these goals that will stop you from achieving the ones in the circle. One thing that I should have said just a few minutes ago in terms of what we've wrote down here, we should also write down the, th the real, real goals that you have. You see what we wrote here, like 1,000 subscribers and $500 a month online. This is like nice boy stuff. This is like, yay guys, I wanna be productive. But you should also know right now, and don't bullshit yourself, that you have some dark desires, that you have some real reasons why you wanna achieve these things. You probably know what I'm hinting at. We all have these like real goals inside of our mind inside of our hearts and inside of our genitals. And it'd be worth it for you to right now, you know, in, as part of the, the ones we've just scribbled out, to maybe add in there some of those. That sure, you know, the eight goals that I've wrote down here, 1000 subscribers and learn to rap, these are nice. But actually a big goal that you have may be to try and fuck as many women as possible. A big goal that you have may be to try and make enough money to buy a car because you visualize yourself driving through the streets with this car and hopefully get some level of status that will allow you to sleep with more girls. Maybe you want to go party. Maybe you want to go take some drugs. Maybe you finally want to go get the girl or make some friends who you know might not be good for you. The reason why I'm making you do this practice is to understand that we only have a limited capacity for the things that we can accomplish. And if we can hyper focus on just a few things, we can accomplish them. But when we open up the desire for more things, that will actually lead to less success. These three goals that I've circled here, 1000 subscribers, $500 a month online and bulk up 15 pounds. They're awesome goals. But if I also try to do some of the other ones, like go traveling and write a blog and learn to rap and run a marathon and write a book, those would actually distract you to the point that you achieve nothing. The most successful guys literally just focus on one thing. Think about it, like the reason why you look up to a particular athlete is for one reason. No one would say to Mike Tyson, Oh, but you, 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 you can't rap though. But no, because he was a boxer. Do you understand what I'm getting at here? The route to success that you actually really need is to simplify your life and to destroy these distractions, these other desires that you have. 
and to just focus in on just the few that will really change your life. And so if I was going to be honest to you, when I was in your position a few years ago and I was you know, really thinking, okay, what I wanted to achieve in life, I would have wrote on this paper for goal number nine, fuck. I wanted to fuck a lot of girls. I would have wrote as number 10, party. Because I wanted to party. And I, I linked that to fucking because I wanted to party so I could fuck more girls. And buy shit. Buy materialistic objects. Probably because it didn't lead to me fucking more girls. It's worth it right now for you to think about what your, your real desires are. And you don't have to tell me, you don't have to write them on paper. But don't bullshit yourself. You have some real desires that you don't want to talk about. You should own those desires. You should not be afraid of them. You should not be scared of them. In the modern day, we're so scared of our dark desires. We're so scared of our dark desires that sometimes you desire to, to violently, violently dominate another man. Violently, brutally dominate a woman. In the modern day, we're so scared to say this. We, we put on our like happy faces. Yep, yep, see, we're all civil. You have inside of you the, the blood and the DNA from the Vikings, the merchants, the warriors. You have inside of you the DNA of a man in your bloodline who smiled as he ripped apart another man and then raped his wife. In the modern day, we don't talk about this at all. And that's actually a problem. Some little chump can watch this and think, yep, see, Hamza's a misogynist and he's pr promoting violence. And like, no, that's clearly not what we're doing here. We should acknowledge all sides to ourselves, especially our, sh our shadow, our dark side. We should acknowledge it, understand it's there, and realize how we can even harness that dark desire for a positive impact on ourselves and the world. You see, when I did this, and I realized that I was deeply motivated by quite frankly, wanting to fuck as many girls as possible. This is when my motivation to be productive and successful first came in. When I realized that this was a desire that I had, that I literally like, if I'm being honest to you, bro, I could imagine no life better than, than one of like Genghis Khan just pillaging villages and stuff and taking all the women and literally having thousands of, of babies. I know that this is fucking crazy. Of course, I'm not going to do that. But like, if I was going to be totally honest, that's like, I've, I've always kind of felt that I've always known it, but like, we don't talk about these things. Right. And so I could have just like, you know, buried it deep like everyone else has. And we've all got them. Right. So if some little fucking skinny neck chump is going to look at this and be like, yeah, this is so evil guys. It's like, trust me, the guys who think that what we're talking about right now is evil or scary. They've got worse, worse dark desires than like the guy who can openly say it. But when I realized this years ago that I was deeply motivated by this idea of, of like dominating and spreading my seed and in a way that I'm obviously not going to do, suddenly it's like I, I was able to reframe things like the work that I'm doing in a way that now started to deeply motivate me. It was like I was able to delude myself, but maybe in truth, that if I become successful in YouTube and in business, I will fuck more girls. I will elevate my status to a point then where there's higher quality women who want me to impregnate them. Now you've never heard someone talk like this before. This is just unspoken about because this is weird. This is abnormal. This is going to get me branded as a weird person. But I'm telling you right now that this saved my life because suddenly I integrated that shadow inside of me and it started to fuel the good habits that I was doing. And of course, I haven't went to any village and fucking cut a man open in half and raped his wife. Of course, I'm not, bro. But like, I was able to take that core dark desire that is inside of each of us, man and woman, child, is inside of each of us and reframe that in a way that slingshotted me to make it more progress in my goals. I don't expect you to be ready for this to be ready to do this task. Maybe you're just watching this thinking, okay, this is a bit weird. What the fuck's happening in this video? I just thought he's just gonna teach us about monk mode, but he wants us to rape and kill some people. Like, no, I totally understand if you don't understand, but there's gonna be a moment when you'll think back to what I'm saying here and you'll think, oh fuck, 
I could have actually made his progress so much faster if I just really thought about what he was saying. Once you have these goals, this is the direction of our monk mode. For me, the three goals that I have chosen reflect this period of my life, which is all about business and health. My first goal, which is very ambitious, is to save $1 million this year. Not just make, but save $1 million. That means I need to make just over 100K a month, which I know sounds silly and stuff, but YouTube, like you make a lot of money as a big YouTuber. <laughs> The second goal of mine is to improve my health, and that's through some like health metrics that um, a lot of people don't really know about, like heart rate variability and heart, resting heart rate and stuff, so improve my health. And the third goal that I have for this period is to publish a life-changing inspirational book. You've got three major goals. We've crossed out all of the other ones. We've crossed out those desires. One point I will tell you is that you can have, you know, these three goals that we've got. Of course, they can have like milestones and mini goals inside of them. So for example, we're only gonna do, let's say three goals. And one of them for you can be something to do with weightlifting or making muscle, you wanna bulk up 10 pounds or you wanna you know, get stronger or something. But inside of that goal can be a mini goal of like a milestone. So for example, one of your goals could be, I want to bulk up to 170 pounds at the end of this year. And a mini goal inside of that could be to bench press 80 kilograms because it's kind of relevant, you know, it, it's tied to the same big goal. So you can have a big goal, which then has like milestones and extra things which are completely tied to it so that, you know, you've got to achieve these things to do the big goal. So for example, my big goal is publish a life-changing book. But then a mini goal inside of that is to, is to get David Goggins to write the foreword of like, you know, the, the start of the book. Another goal, okay, the big goal of mine is, is to save $1 million this year. But then mini goals inside of that is to produce like 42 videos, like life-changing videos once a week onto the YouTube channel. And also to send people to Adonis Academy, which is like my, like my online community, which is where I make most of my money. That's linked in the description. Three reasonable pretty big goals. Now, my, mine are big, by the way, like mine are really big, like audacious and ambitious goals, but I've got to the point where I can like, I can achieve that. So for you, I've told you, okay, you know, really choose reasonable goals, but that's because, you know, you're just starting this journey. You still, you're still at the point where you need to fix your life. I'm only three years in and look how much I've been able to increase my goals because when I started in your position, my goals were probably the same as yours. 1000 subscribers by the end of the year and 500 pounds through the, the month of December online. That, those were my goals when I first started. So you can see that in less than like three years, I went from that reasonable goal to now what seems like a stupid, like my goal seems stupidly ambitious, save $1 million this year. And I genuinely think I probably will, I probably will, will achieve that because they're still reasonable for me. Does this make sense? So we need to, you know, you need to really make sure the goal that you've set is reasonable for you and your position in life right now. The number one reason why you could fail so far is because you've set a goal that you genuinely just can't achieve because you're not at that level that you need to be. The bigger a goal is right now, the more it's actually going to put you off just for now. And then you'll get to a point when you're actually productive and you're working and you're healthy. And at that point you can set some bigger goals. We're on to the next step, the second step of this protocol. And this is the one where your Jeffrey brain's gonna hype up and really piss you off now. For this step, we're gonna cut out all bad habits. This isn't that I'm telling you, yep, you can still play one hour of video. We're cutting out all 100% of our bad habits. There is no protocol or, or self-improvement guru online who speaks like this. All of them tell you to have balance. All of them tell you that you can go and enjoy a little bit. Don't be so extreme. And those same people, if you have a look at their YouTube channels or their, their profiles or whatever, and you scroll down for months and years, you realize that they've actually not even made that much progress in their lives. They literally did. So you can choose, you want to live that life of balance then you can, but I'm telling you right now that every successful guy is actually extreme. I'm just telling you the truth. From what I've seen in the successful guys, they're actually all extreme. You can't even get to a good level of success by being like a balanced guy. You can ex be extreme and then switch your focus of extremity to eventually your life is somewhat balanced, but 
you've got to have like somewhat of an extreme personality to get to a good level of success, which you probably do want. So we're going to go extreme with this and we're going to cut out all bad habits. There's something that I learned from this, this scientist online on YouTube called Andrew Huberman. You may have seen some of his posts before, like this neuroscientist, and he's got like a big podcast with like 2 million subscribers. And he speaks about dopamine and how this works. And you've probably heard the word dopamine before. And I'm going to explain to you like the bro science version of this. I'm not a scientist, but I do. I'm not a scientist, but I'm the, I'm the kind of guy who implements the science and then tells you in basic English what to do. So I'm going to tell you from my perspective of how dopamine will change your life. You see, dopamine is kind of like our hormone and a feeling inside of us that we want to do something. Dopamine is like motivation. It's this feeling, this somewhat positive feeling that we want to go and do this thing. Your dopamine receptors get fried through all bad habits because modern day inventions has, has hyper stimulated everything. Not just, you know, social media, but porn, all kinds of internet related, screen related things, and even junk food and drugs. All of it's like, like a hyper amount of what it should be. And so now when you do any bad habits, your dopamine receptors get fried to the point that it actually negatively impacts you even when you're not even doing that bad habit. So if, so this is how it works, right? Every time you do a bad habit, it feels good, right? So when you play video games, it feels good. When you watch porn, it feels good. When you eat junk food, it feels good. And so you get this rise of like this feel, nice feeling. But as soon as it's done, like as soon as you're done, you know, and you're cleaning up after you've just fat or you've, you know, you swallowed the bite of food that was bad for you, like the chocolate or something, you swallowed it. It's like all of that feeling good just stops and it actually goes down. And what's so interesting with all of these bad habits, that feeling of feeling good, it goes down below where it started at. So what this means is that every single time you do a bad habit, it actually, like you get like a nice feeling for some time, pleasure. But after it's done, after you've nut, after you've logged off the video game, your baseline for how good you feel goes down. And now sure, you can go get another high, like another fix of your bad habit of your, of your video games or something. And you'll go up in pleasure till you log off and it'll go down and it'll go below the baseline and you'll get a new low baseline. And then you'll go play video games, but you know, the, the game doesn't feel any fun as, as much anymore and then it goes down. And then you play video games whilst also eating junk food and you know, that feels really nice. Okay, sweet. Oh, okay, guys, I'm going to go offline now and it goes down and down and down and down. And before you know it, your fat doctor tells you that you're clinically dep depressed and you need some pills. This, I think, is one of the biggest problems of the modern day. People's dopamine, people's like, like feelings of, of, of well-being are so low because we've all just overdone the bad habits. Every time you do a bad habit, it just drops your baseline of feeling good even lower and lower and lower. This is why bad habits, these modern bad habits, are so cutthroat. It's not just that, you know, you, once you're done, okay, you, you know, you get the high and now, okay, things are back to normal. No, no, no. It's that when you go back to normal, you go below where you were beforehand and you just keep going below and below and below and below. And before you know it, you've completely forgotten that childlike happiness that you used to have. Like you remember how innocent and how genuinely like, like happy and joyful you used to be as a child. And we see this. And we often just think that that's, oh yeah, that's just what children are like. No, there are some adults out there who have the same childlike happiness. It's not about children. It's not about genetics or any of this bullshit. It's that they haven't fucked up their baseline through an excess of, of dopamine, through an excess of bad habits. So what this means for you 
is that we know the bad habits are, are bad for us. We know porn's bad for us. We know junk food's bad for us. And you might be coping right now. There's this one particular bad habit that you don't think is that bad. And you know, it's not that much of a problem, the, the junk food, or maybe it's video games for you. Maybe it's a bit of fapping for you. Maybe it's weed or something. There's something, you know, that's already in your mind right now, isn't there? Just be honest. Is there something in your mind right now, some activity that you know objectively is bad, but like you're actually trying hard to rationalize it and say like, oh yeah, I don't know. I don't actually feel that way about that one. No, no, that, 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 that activity which is the one I'm most addicted to that one's fine I swear guys you're, you're experiencing that in your own mind right now aren't you didn't I tell you that your own brain is literally leading you astray I'm genuinely telling you you can't even trust your own brain the reason why unfortunately is that these fucking companies that have made these bad habits they've hijacked your brain and literally like made you convince yourself to keep playing you know because they've made them so addictive this is why you can't even trust your own brain anymore you don't even know what's right or wrong. This is why I'm able to call you out and say exactly what your brain's going through because I've been there. Now I'm on the other side and I see how fucked my brain was, how much I argued for weed, how much I argued for video games. And I look at it now like, what the fuck? Those things were ruining my life and I was defending them. The reason why, you you know, like some stupid girl defends TikTok is because she's literally been manipulated by those software developers that have made the app so that it's so addictive that she fights for it. And it's the same with the nutritionists who make this like ultra tasty, palatable junk food. You, you realize this, the level that we've got to with you know, scientific technology research and everything. It's like these nerds know how to make you fight for the thing that's killing you. Not fight the thing that's killing you. Make you fight for it in defense for it. There is something in your mind, some bullshit going on a certain activity that you don't want to give up. And it's usually that one. It is that one. That's the one that's going to give you the biggest boost because here is the opposite side of things. When we do these bad habits, our baseline goes down and down and down. But when we do the good habits, the hard things, what happens? Well, since they're hard and oftentimes quite painful, you know, we feel bad in some ways whilst we do it, don't we? Like exercise for a lot of people feels quite painful, doesn't it? So it, you go from here, this baseline, and you actually go below it for a little while because it's painful and it's really uncomfortable. But then when you do these good habits like exercise and reading and meditation and working hard, taking a walk in nature, you know, those things that you know are good for you. And, you know, sometimes it feels a bit boring. You don't really want to and stuff. It goes down, like it dips down like a little bit from baseline of boredom and discomfort, but then it rises and it rises above the baseline. And then you have a new baseline. Okay, now you're up here. And then you do the same thing. Now you're gonna go hit like a really hard workout, okay? It's really uncomfortable, now you're here. And then you rise, you build the muscle, you feel good about yourself and your baselines went higher and higher and higher and higher. When you do the bad habits, your baseline of, of how you feel goes down and down and down until eventually you literally just feel like shit 24 seven, even if you're not even currently doing the, the bad habits. You know, like video gamers are all depressed mostly, right? But like, they're not just depressed when they play the video game. They're just depressed 24 seven, like their baseline's so fucking low. But imagine on the opposite hand, imagine the guy who is like a really good athlete. He's really intelligent. He's a really good student. He's, he's got like a really awesome life and he does nothing. Right here, right now, we just put him into an empty room. He'd just be smiling. Like imagine for you, right? If we, if you literally over the next nine months were ultra productive and you achieve those three goals that you wrote down and suddenly you've literally got a fucking six pack and you're actually like happy about your life and you've improved your relationship and maybe you've got a girlfriend, you've improved your relationship with your family. You know, you've, you've built a good life from doing the good habits. And then let's say we just locked you in a, in a empty room you would sit in that room, literally just with a, like a happy smile on your face, wouldn't you? Your baseline would be so high that you don't even need to do anything to feel good. That is when like the snowball, the momentum hits and you start to like do these, these good habits automatically without even feeling like they're like that hard to do. People say that they just wanna play some video games and smoke some weed because it's fun, but the thing is it's not fun because those people are depressed. So it's not fun. It's like you know, those people literally, you know, the, the video gamer, when you think about your video game friends, they're not actually having that much fun in their day. If you like, you've watched your friends play video games sometimes, right? 
You've literally seen them just like this. They're not actually even having that much fun. When you really, imagine the last time you watched someone play video games. They're literally... Of, you know, fucking controllers. Ah. It's like, it, they're not even having that much fun. But when you see someone who has really, really done a bunch of good habits for a long time, you literally see them just smiling, just for no reason. So this is the beauty about cutting out all bad habits. And it's gonna sound weird, but if you cut out all bad, fun habits, you will literally have more fun than you did before. When you cut out all of the bad habits, you literally have more fun than you did when you were doing the fun stuff. But now you have it 24 seven because of the man that you've become, because of the accomplishments that you have and the life that you've built. Video games, porn, social media, point like just watching random pointless YouTube videos, junk food and drugs, weed, alcohol. There's one important part of this, and it's something that you might not even accept right now. And if you don't, I guarantee maybe in six months or a year or two years, you might end up seeing this video again. And you'll wish that you had taken this piece of advice that I'm about to tell you. The secret to self-improvements, the real self-improvement, not the kind of one that you see like these pussies talk about online or anything, but the secret to actually fixing your life is to genuinely cut out all bad habits. That last moment when you cut out like literally all of them, all of these bad, horrible things for you, that's when things just suddenly go like zero to one and like the good habits and, the, and your life becomes fun again. When you have this one nagging thing that you don't want to get rid of, and you could probably think which one it is for you right now. When you keep that one thing in your life, it's not. You still live this like semi-depressed life and that, that saps your spirits. It saps like your productivity and your focus and you'll not achieve the goals that you wanted. Remember, we're not like those average mediocre people who can live a life of balance or anything. We're not like them. If you, if you were, you already would be living a life of balance, wouldn't you? By you needing to fix your life and being at such a shit position beforehand, you're like, we've, like, you have to be quite an extreme guy, right? Because those balanced people, they play like, you know, video games twice, two hours a day or something. And they're just kind of like happy just being mediocre. You're not one of them. You're the guy, most likely, that you've had an extreme like shit life and you could have an extremely good life. You're not the kind of guy who can have like somewhere in the middle. Most people are near the middle, okay, sweet. So what this means is you can't live like most people. You can't just keep video games in your life and expect to actually have still have a good life because you're not the kind of guy who can play one hour of video games. You can cope and say like, yeah, you know, video games aren't that bad, it's just one hour is fine. Like we can't play one hour. We're the kind of people who we will play as much as we possibly can. We, there's just something like wrong with us in, se in that sense. But when you get rid of these distractions, these awful things for you, Suddenly you will literally enjoy working and then it's like working and being productive to your goals becomes your video game that you can't stop doing and you become that guy that people think like is crazy because you're doing two workouts a day because you're working on your business 10 hours a day and I promise you that you'll only get there with this major extreme level of success if you cut out all of these. This is non-negotiable. There's a reason why you clicked on this video and there's a reason why you've stayed watching to my, to my words here because you know that the normal life was never gonna work for you. You know that you're not that average mediocre person who can do the life of balance. So you must understand right now, there's multiple bad habits that you do and we need to literally cut out all of them. And I totally understand that by the way. I totally understand that. For me, for a long time, it was weed. I used to smoke weed every single day. And the thing is, I didn't even enjoy it that much. Honestly, like I wanted to quit so many times. You know, if, if there's like a habit that you've wanted to quit, that like you've tried to quit like five times over the last few years, that says it itself. No one tries to quit exercise, do they? No one tries to like, oh yeah, I'm really trying to quit exercise guys, but I'm strong. No one tries to quit reading books, do they? So when there's something like an activity that you're defending in your mind that, yeah, but it's not really a problem, I swear. It's like if you, you've tried to quit it like five times before this, that says in itself that you know that that's like a stupid thing for you. You know it. So right here, right now, for maybe the first time in a while, we need to just, it's common sense. We need to just hold our hands up and say, yep, the bad habits that I do 
are bad. We need to just see them as a bad thing. Don't cope and say they're productive. Don't cope and say, you know, one hour, I'm just unwinding at the end of a day or something. Don't say that. And just say, yep, these are bad habits that are bad for me that I actually would be better off if I didn't do them. And I'll explain exactly how to get rid of all of these bad habits, by the way. But there's two extra points for this. There's multiple reasons to do this. You know, it'll reset your dopamine baseline. It'll, it'll give you more time. And this is what most people say. It's like, you know, you'll save the time to then go and use productively. That's nice. But actually, I think there's a hidden benefit to this, especially with things like video games and social media and porn. It gives you more of your mental load, your brain power back. You see, to become successful to the level that you want, you need to have as many of your thoughts directed to your goals. What I mean by this is that your shower thoughts must be related to your goals. The thoughts that you get when you're having a shit, when you're literally having a piss, the thoughts that you get must be related to your goals if you want to become successful. Like Successful people are very extreme. They, we're literally getting ideas once we're having a shit, bro. So if you're playing video games, the thing is sometimes you're having a shit and you think about the video game. You think about, oh man, I'm going to message this guy on Discord. I can't wait to play with him. You're thinking about the, the time you just died or whatever on League of Legends or some bullshit. It takes your thoughts away from you. These bad habits, they take your thoughts away from you. That's unacceptable. But one other point. This also includes hanging out with friends. Being social and having friends is, a, is an awesome thing. That's a good habit. But if you're watching this video right now and you relate to this need of, of needing to fix your life, if you're at this position in life right now where you need to fix your life, I guarantee you that your friends are pieces of shit. I guarantee you that your friends aren't even nice people. I guarantee you that you will be better off without them. Now, I'll give you a disclaimer here. Being social is so important. Like, I, I'm very much a guy who likes to think of, like, primal stuff. And we should live in a tribe. Genuinely, we should live in a tribe. We should be close to family and friends and work together. Of course we should. But that means that we should have good people in our lives. And if you are at this point right now where you need to fix your life, bro, that probably means you don't even have any good people in your life. It probably means that the, the friends you do have are actually holding you back. Because I guarantee that when you do make progress in your self-improvements, when you do make progress and become more successful, those people will actually look down upon you. They will feel negative towards your success. They'll think worse of you as you get better. Because they're crabs. They're crabs in a bucket. They're trying to pull you back down into mediocrity am amongst them. The idea is to go out, go alone on monk mode, ruthlessly improve yourself, detach away from these Jeffries and, you know, just don't even reply to their messages, mute all of the group chats, don't even look at them. Even if, if, if you think you'll never be friends with them again, like if you suddenly became successful and intelligent and stuff, you'd probably never speak to them again anyway. So why the fuck would you still be friends with them now if you know you're not eventually going to be speaking to them long term? The idea is just detach away from them, go monk mode, come out a new person and then attract like friends who are of higher quality. Those higher quality people you can't just be friends with right now because those higher quality people won't be friends with you whilst you're friends with low quality people. Because if you're friends with low quality people, it means you're a low quality person. And the fastest way to, to get rid of this negative social influence is to go it alone for some time. You can try, like, I'd love to tell you, yeah, you know, the wholesome thing is to get your friends on self-improvement, bro. I've tried giving that advice so many times and almost no one's ever been successful with it. Either you find someone who's already on self-improvement, who's already going to the gym and you grow together, that's awesome. But your old Jeffrey friends aren't just going to suddenly, like, quit playing video games just because you're telling them to. I promise you, you can try all you want, but I'm telling you right now, I've never once seen this actually work. They need to discover the truth the darkness of their lives first like you did and then go through the trials and tribulations for months of trying to figure out what to do just like you did you can't just suddenly take them in that period where you were at where you were totally fine and content playing video games and to try and help them out of it i've never seen that happen before but i'd love to be proven wrong if you can save your friends do it but i've never actually seen that so 
how do you actually go about quitting a bad habit? You know, I'm telling you right now, yeah, we need to quit all bad habits. And it sounds like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, okay, we probably do. But how do you actually go and do that? What we need to do is change our basic attack. Now, before you watch this part of the video, which is gonna be very interesting, you need to clarify right now if you totally are convinced to give up all bad habits. Be totally honest right now. Is there something, like just be honest with yourself, is there a habit, like a task, an activity in your brain that you don't wanna give up, that your brain keeps talking to you about? And it keeps saying like, no, 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 maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. How about this? No, no, no. He's not talking about this thing. Like, no, no, it's not even that bad. No, I'm not like him. It's not that bad. Is there something that you're still coping about? If there is, I urge you to rewatch the previous section at normal speed and just rewatch it and really take it seriously what I've just said. Now, if you're watching this section right here, right now, that means that you are totally convinced that we need to get rid of all bad habits, but we just need to figure out how to actually do that. And we do that through changing our basic attack. A lot of guys try and quit playing video games and smoking weed, and they do. You know, a lot of guys will tell you, maybe you've tried, yeah, I've quit playing video games now. But then you have nothing else to fill your time with. And so you get really, really bored, and then you end up going back. We're going to change this with our basic attack, which is kind of like a filler activity. There's a YouTuber... Uh, a friend of mine actually, Ali Abdal, and he mentioned this in a video, we should change our basic attack. So if chances are, you know what I'm talking about, right? In a, in a video game, you have a basic attack and you have special attacks. Special attacks are things that you do every now and then when you've got enough mana and energy and everything. But a basic attack is the thing that you naturally gravitate towards. For most of our lives, our basic attack has been pointlessly surfing on the internet, watching bullshit on YouTube, TikTok, checking notifications on Snapchat and stuff, playing video games, hopping on Discord and then checking notifications, then checking Discord again, then hopping on a call with Discord and one of your friends is just eating, he'll be there in 10 minutes, let's all go play a few games, League or some shit, right? Our basic attack has always been bad habits. And so when we change or when we remove bad habits is our basic attack, but we don't replace it with anything else. Suddenly you're left like just with nothing to do and then you go back to the old basic attack of, of bad habits, right? So what we need to do, we need to change our basic attack, the thing that we just naturally do throughout the day when we've got nothing to do, which previously used to be video games and social media and shit. We need to change that to something productive and there's two activities that you can use here. And they are reading, and specifically watching full length educational podcasts. These are the two activities that have most developed me and they will develop you. Essentially learning through books and full length podcasts. Everything that I know, everything that I've gotten, the success that I've built has come from the knowledge that I've gained from books and full length YouTube videos like uh, podcasts, right? Now, I'm gonna give you a disclaimer which is very interesting in this space because this is something that actually most people on, on YouTube disagree with me with, especially the, the self-improvement guys. This is technically consuming content. You've heard online, this, everyone parrots the same phrase and it's gonna seem so weird that I'm like countering this, right? Everyone parrots the same phrase and it's when everyone agrees on something, it's probably wrong. Every single person on, on self-improvement, every single person on YouTube says this, you shouldn't watch these kinds of content, educational stuff, if you're not gonna take action. That's what everyone says, right? Everyone says that watching self-improvement content but not taking action is pointless. Reading self-improvement books but not taking action is pointless. I've actually realized, I think that's wrong. I think consuming educational content and books and not taking action is still infinitely better than just doing the bad habits that we're used to. I think it's better to simply just read and not straight and like not go and use what you've read than it is to play video games. Now, when I've said it like that, that's like, well, yeah, of course it is. Like this is common sense, right? So we've all had this idea that no, no, if you're gonna if you're gonna watch a podcast and you've got to make sure you've got to use it, if you're gonna read, then you've got to make sure that you take action on it. And that seems like good advice, but I realize it's actually wrong because 
when we don't take action straight away, but we're just reading a book, for example, or we're watching a podcast, it's not like nothing's happening. What's happening is that our brains, like neurons and, you know, the brain shit, is all forming new pathways, new beliefs, new mindsets, new stories to look back on that will actually lead us to go and taking action in the right way in the future. What I've seen in myself, and also probably you've ex you're experiencing this right now, and also I have seen it in literally so many guys that I've helped, is that there is an initial period of self-improvement where you only consume the content, but you don't take action. And we think that this period is like a bad thing. And we feel fucking horrible when we're in this period because we're, we're learning about the things that we should do, but we don't do them. And so we feel really horrible. But what I've realized is every guy that I've seen has went through this period of consuming this educational self-improvement box and everything and not taking action. But then, they start taking action afterwards. You see, if you've been obsessed recently with self-improvement, fixing your life, monk mode, and all, this, all these things, but you haven't really used it consistently in person, right now you'd probably be thinking like, yeah, this has all been a failure, I've not been able to improve my life, but I promise you that I was in the exact same boat as you, where I only consumed the content, didn't actually really take real action to it, but then eventually I went on to, and it was only when I went on to take the action that I needed to. I looked back at the months that I was reading without taking action, the, the months that I watched the self-improvement, videos to realize that they were actually still helping me that I needed to first change my brain and my beliefs through that kind of content but I didn't yet have the capacity to do the work does this make sense so I know that this sounds weird and I'm not saying this like in a way that yeah you should just watch my videos keep watching my video no no, no. I'm not saying to watch my, my videos I'm saying to read books and to watch full-length educational podcasts right my videos the recent ones like you know I've got five videos just recently which you can maybe say a podcast but most of my videos are um, like the short clickbaity style don't watch those kinds of videos what I'm saying is consume the good like long really long form one to two hour long podcasts on YouTube by Andrew Huberman Chris Williamson, the diary of a CEO, these kinds of guys who are very successful guys and they're doing like these unfiltered, unedited podcasts. I promise you that every time I sit down and really like pay attention to a full length, unedited podcast, right? So no like fucking memes, no short form, no like highlight clip that's five minutes long. That's like Joe Rogan's motivational advice that will change your life. No, 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 not that bullshit. The full length educational podcast. When I sit down and watch one where I'm really paying attention to it, I swear to God, I, I actually like, it's like my, I feel my brain change and my beliefs change. And suddenly there's like a new thing that I'm keeping in mind for like the rest of my life. You don't realize how valuable it actually is to consume content. It's seen as a really like bad thing these days. Consuming pointless content, social media and shit, okay, it's bad. But education is fantastic. And again, it needs to be, like if you're watching it on YouTube, like full length podcasts, not the highlight clips. Not like, you know, the five minute clip that teaches you or oh, Andrew Huberman's dopamine advice. No, no, no. It's like the full two hour Andrew Huberman episode on dopamine. And you literally sit there, take your fingers off the mouse, stop scrolling down to the comments and just sit there and really pay attention to it. Make this your new basic attack. Make this the thing that you do when you've got nothing to do. I keep like a book open, like the way of the superior man, this book. I keep this book open literally like open like this next to me so that anytime my brain starts coping and I start thinking like, oh, maybe I should just go waste some time on YouTube or, you know, I could do whatever bullshit. It's like, I just end up grabbing this and just reading it. And it's like, my understanding of this book that is an amazing book has, has leveled up. And now I do this with podcasts too. Anytime, like if I'm eating or if I've got some free time and I'm just kind of, you know, I'd end up like killing time and doing some bullshit. I'm watching something deeply educational. And so, yes, this is consuming content, but I genuinely think that we've got it wrong. When we, We've always thought if you consume content, that's a bad thing. My life has changed, improved significantly because of this like consuming content that we always thought was bad. It's just, the, the, the simple thing is just, just don't consume bullshit. Don't consume by people who are making shit for views. Don't consume 
by people who are making clickbait titles, like the top seven passive income ways that you can make $500 a month, like those fucking shit videos. Don't watch any like shit clickbait video, which is, you know, 10 minutes long. And it's like the top seven, you know, this type of shit. Cause th those videos don't actually fucking help you that much. You can sit there and watch and think that my old videos and, and those type of like YouTubers are helping you. But the truth is like your life doesn't change from those type of ones. It, it changes from when you really invest like two hours straight into watching like an Andrew Huberman podcast where he's going into like the deep science of something that we can implement in our lives. Recently, I've been watching this other guy, the, the Diary of a CEO, and that's quite nice. Specifically, if you're gonna watch podcasts, specifically watch the episodes that are not just interesting, but that are specifically aligned to your goals. So you can click on some of these podcasts and there'll be something that like, you can go into the Diary of a CEO and there's a podcast with like, um, Zach and Cody, like, you know, the fucking, the, 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 one of like some like teen, like some childhood, um, movie star or something right and i used to watch him as well like some show so i clicked on it i was like oh wow it's that guy and i was watching it for a few minutes i was like wait why am i watching this shit it's like yeah it's kind of interesting seeing like some kid that i used to watch on tv you know growing up like the sweet life of zach and cody what um cole sprouse or whatever his fucking name is right and i was watching it for a few minutes i was like wait this isn't going to be educational it's like it's just some fucking celebrity i don't give a fuck right so i went off that and watched it about some random businessman and they like giving tips to each other and uh, like the the host of this podcast the diary of a ceo he starts talking about yeah focus is really important you've got to make sure you focus on this and this and this and i'm actually learning from that this i think is so amazing so don't think to yourself right now like oh no but you know everyone said not to consume content if you're not going to take action again when I say it like this, it's, it's common sense, right? Reading just a book, and even if you don't take action on it, is better than playing video games or taking drugs or watching porn. Doing a good habit that you don't immediately take action on is better than a bad habit. And again, all of the value of this, you know, these podcasts and stuff, it isn't that we'll suddenly go and take action. It's that our beliefs change in our mind. There's, there's a guy I really like, Alex Hamozi, and he's done a bunch of podcasts. Like he's not the podcast host, he goes on podcasts. And he's like, just watching this guy talk about business has, I've not, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not straight away taking action on what he said, but it's like the beliefs change in my mind. And then the action I take literally six months later is better because of that podcast that changed some belief, some mindset that I had. So this now could be your, your new go-to activity, that anytime you don't really know what to do, anytime that you're about to just go play video games, anytime that you've got some free time, you're just eating some food, or you're just killing time, you're bored, or whatever it is, just literally either read a book. I prefer books, but I'd say most guys, just go onto YouTube and watch a full-length podcast. And again, please trust me, the highlight clips don't count. Shorts obviously don't count, but like the highlight, you know, Joe Rogan's advice, no. You go onto the um, the podcast, you know, YouTuber page, and often they'll post their highlight there, which is a bit more clickbait, and so your little Jeffrey brain will wanna click on it, don't. Watch the full, like, two hour, one and a half hour length episode. Take your hands off, don't check the comments, don't look at the suggested videos, and literally just watch it like you're, like you're an intellectual who actually cares about knowledge and education, and I promise you, you won't, like, realize this just yet, but maybe you will now. Your beliefs about things will start to change, and this is deeply valuable. I am where I am today because at that moment of my monk mode, like two and a half years ago, like, you know, like three years ago, I was in the degenerate stage, but then after a little while, I got into monk mode. That I spent a lot of my time just learning and educating myself on like the things that I was eventually going to implement. Learning is one of the reasons why I was able to surpass everyone in the self-improvement niche. Think about it, I started the self-improvement YouTube channel when everyone was telling me it was too saturated. I started and I, I ended up becoming like the, the biggest like self-improvement channel out there because I literally spent most of my day just learning. I spent hours just reading because I had nothing else to do because I wasn't doing bad habits anymore. Does that make sense? So like we cut out all of the bad habits and now anytime we would have done the bad habits, anytime we would have hopped online with our little Discord Jeffrey friends who keep pressuring us to play video games or anytime we would have watched like some bullshit, pointless, non-educational YouTube video, we now literally just fill it up with learning. Think to yourself right now, like this new identity that you can have of yourself of like, you know, like, like a wise man. Like if you could imagine a man like, like Thomas Edison Theodore Roosevelt's like, you know, like the, the, the 
like some high quality, like old school men. And they literally would have like, they, they spend hours a day just reading and thinking. And they were able to become very capable men because of that. You should think of yourself in the same way. Like we are young men full of knowledge, full of good beliefs and education. And we really value like learning the, the knowledge and wisdom of more successful men so that we can go and use it. So even if you find yourself, and, and I, will, I will say one thing though, if you've watched normal self-improvement videos, like a lot of my videos that I've posted to this channel, like probably not the last like five videos that I've posted, but before, you know, recently I've been posting like longer videos with absolutely no edits and stuff. I think these videos are really educational. But before that, literally I've posted 700 videos to my ch channel, but you can scroll down my channel and it's like the top seven ways why girls won't like, I don't think those videos really fucking help you. And so I think that, you know, all this time we've been saying like, oh, you shouldn't consume content if you're not gonna take action. I think the reason why we say that is because those kinds of videos aren't worth watching. The issue is as a creator, and you know, I don't blame YouTubers, like most YouTubers do this. They make these like clickbait videos. Alex Hamozi, unfortunately, does this now. Most YouTubers just do this. They make the more clickbait, short, edited video. The reason why is just because more people just watch them. More people are Jeffries who aren't actually like wanting knowledge. They just want stimulation. But you are not that kind of guy anymore. You're not the guy who searches for stimulation. You're the guy who searches for education. And so you will watch these like full length podcasts like the two hour ones. And I'm not even saying my videos, I'm, I'm going to find like some podcasts that you really like. I like Andrew Huberman, Chris Williamson and the diary of a CEO. And if you can th find some other ones that you like, go and watch them. One extra tip I'll give you is I think watching it on YouTube is better than just listening to it on Spotify. That's something that again, that the, the guy I keep mentioning, Alex Hamozzi, that's something that he mentions at the start of this book. It's like there's research to show that if you can watch and listen at the same time, that will, help your brain more than if you just listen. You know, it's like another like visual, like um, another sense that's being used. So essentially like watch the full length podcast so you can literally see the people and stuff rather than listen to it. Still listen to podcasts on Spotify when you're driving or when you're doing the dishes or something. But I would say like a solid few hours, like literally four to six hours of your day, you could genuinely spend watching full length podcasts, writing notes, getting ideas and trying to just, just trying to implement one little thing. You watch a two hour podcast by Andrew Huberman and he talks about how to use cold and heat to improve your health. And just from that, if all you do is go and take a cold shower for 30 seconds with, your, with the thought that, oh yeah, Andrew Huberman said that it's healthy to take cold showers. Now you've taken action. Not only have you got the new belief that, you know, like being cold is good for your health, but that now you're actually taking action with it. Be okay with literally watching podcasts and reading for six to eight to 10 hours a day because doing that a day, like a day where you read for 10 hours is better than a day where you play video games for 10 hours. It, like simply like that, right? That's all you've got to think of. And of course it's not going to be 10 hours. You still got to go eat and work out and stuff. But anytime you've got some free time, just learn, don't stimulate. So now at this point, you're, you're beginning to replace all of your bad habits for learning. Your entire day is filled up of you gaining the knowledge that you need to eventually become successful, which is amazing. Now we need to actually do the specific tasks that will get you to those goals that we set before. You remember the, the page of goals that we wrote down and we scribbled a bunch of them and we circled the three goals that we need. This is easy, right? So right now, think about it. We've already eliminated most of your bad habits, right? Pretty much all of your bad habits should be gone at this point. Anytime that you find yourself doing a bad habit, just like quickly go back to reading or to watching the podcast. And it's not going to be perfect, by the way, you know, over the next few days, you're going to find that you really want to, um, you know, you'll, you'll find yourself just playing video games by accident or something. It's normal, but just keep coming back to just spending most of your time as learning. And now we're on the easy part. We can almost imagine in an ideal situation that your entire day is just filled up of learning. You're learning some really good things. Now we just need to do the specific tasks, the best, most important tasks that will get you to your goals. And we just use a simple like formula for this. And this is the 80-20 rule. 
You've probably heard of this like productivity tactic before, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. The idea is that you just try to figure out what is the most impactful, highest leverage task that will get you to most of where you want to be. So for example, my first goal on this, so you can look at your goal list, right? My first goal is 1,000 subscribers. We would ask ourselves, okay, what is the most important, crucial 80% task that would get us to 1,000 subscribers? What is like the task that would get us most of the way there? Think about it. What is the task that would get us most of the way to a thousand subscribers? Recording videos. Literally just, you know, getting your phone or your camera and recording the video. And then also maybe scripting the video. That's it. That's the most important task right there. Another way you can do this, which I like, is for, for each goal that you have, 1,000 subscribers, $500 a month online, bulk up 15 uh, pounds, for each goal that you have, Ask yourself, if you could do just literally one task for that goal, just one task forever for that goal, what would it be? If you could literally, there's only one task that, like one specific task that you could do to get to 1,000 subscribers, what would it be? If you chose, for example, ah, oh, writing a script, then you'd fail because you could write the script, but like we can only do one task so you wouldn't be able to record because that's a separate task, right? So if, to get to 1,000 subscribers, the one task that you, if you could only do one task, it would be to simply just record the video, right? It wouldn't be to go update your channel banner. It wouldn't be to go reply to everyone who commented on your video and go comment on other people's videos or, you know, like the fucking shit YouTubers do that. Like the small YouTubers, they like, they'll save a quote ready for when I post and then they'll quickly paste their quote, like hoping that someone will click on their channel or something. You wouldn't do that, right? If you could only do just one task for your goal, what would it be? Ask yourself that question and then think to yourself, whatever the task is, always prioritize that one task. Whatever that task is, the highest leverage, most important task, always prioritize that one task. For the 1,000 subscriber goal, it's recording. For the $500 a month online, honestly, it'd probably still be recording if I was gonna make like a YouTube business from it, probably still recording. For the bulk up 15 pounds, it would be to eat the calorie surplus per day, to eat 200 grams of protein per day. So this right here, is where it gets very interesting because this is how you add in, in my opinion, the most effective protocol for you to get you to your goals. You fill up your day as much as possible with learning. And of course, you know, add in eating and, and add in your workout and stuff, right? And added sleep and stuff, of course, right? But most of your day is just learning. Then what you do is you figure out what would be the highest important task for the three goals that you wrote down. And then you add just those tasks inside. So that most of your day is actually still learning. You're still developing your skills, but you have the highest important task that will actually make you some progress. So for example, if you want to, if you're like a new YouTuber, most of your day should be spent like researching and learning, but you should upload a video to your YouTube channel every single day. It's when you open yourself up to too many bullshit mini like tasks that feel productive. Like, you know, the shit YouTubers like to reply to everyone's comments and they'll comment on other Like when you do that, you begin to like lose time from learning that would have actually pushed you further. And I can give you one more good tip. When you do find out what the task is, like that major task that you need to focus on to get you to your goals, learn more specifically about that task. So again, if the one major most important task for the thousand subscriber goal that we have is recording, then you should start to do some learning specifically on how you could be better at recording. So you could go and read a book on public speaking. You could go and watch a podcast of some like famous YouTuber who, who teaches people how to like record better. And this is how you get to like some top tier levels. I'm telling you right now, it's not the guy who tries to do the entire thing and he tries to reply to everyone's comment. It's just the guy who realizes, okay, what is the most important task? and then gets amazing at it. You structure your learning around that task and you constantly keep getting better at that one major task. The task that I do is recording. I'm good at recording, I'm good at being on camera, I'm good at telling stories and captivating you and making you listen to me for one hour and 17 minutes with no editing. This is why I became successful, this protocol right here. Now your day is all full of, of learning, and then it's got the most important tasks that you need to get you to your most three important goals. You will mess up, you will make lots of mistakes, you will mess up and end up and find yourself on video games or some bullshit, but as long as you gravitate back to this with you know a sense of like, yeah, but of course it couldn't be perfect, I'm not amazing just yet, but I'll, okay, I'm gonna go back to learning. You ended up fapping or something, but you're like, okay, fuck it, fuck it, go on, it's stupid, I fap, but whatever, I'm gonna go back to learning. 
you'll find that you'll make less mistakes as time go, goes on because you'll naturally just learn how to not make those mistakes. This is the secret monk mode protocol that changed my life because it was not an easy one, it was extreme and I am an extreme guy. When you're ready to start being surrounded by other extreme men, other men who are on the same path as you, you can click the top link in the description which is the Adonis Academy which is my private community. Go click that link right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.